Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolo Tech, and today Apple released iOS 15.6 RC, or Release Candidate. This is the final version of iOS 15.6 as long as there's no additional issues in it. So they release it earlier to developers and soon to public beta testers. Usually by the time you're watching this video, the public beta is out as well, and as long as there's no additional issues, this will be the same as the final version. And this came in at a very large 5.38 gigabytes on the iPhone 12 Pro and was about 5 gigabytes or so on all the devices here. Anytime you go from a beta to a public version or from a public ver version to a beta, it has to reinstall the entire OS and it's a pretty large install. So that's typical, but just something I wanted to point out. Now, along with this, Apple also released iPadOS 15.6 RC, watchOS 8.7 RC, tvOS 15.6 RC, macOS 12.5 RC, and HomePodOS 15.6 RC. All of those are available to developers now. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, general, then about. And as you can see, the build number is 19G69. And this particular build, like I said, should be the final version. And it does have some features and quite a few bug fixes in it. Now, the first time I booted up the iPhone 10, it actually went to the hello screen. So that's sort of like the setup screen. I had to put in my password, agree to sharing analytics or not. And then it brought me to the home screen. So that showed up on the iPhone 10. And as far as a modem update in this particular update, there is no modem update. It's the same as beta five. However, if you're coming from iOS 15.5, it will be different, but it's 2.70.01 on the iPhone 12 pro. So it's the same as beta five. Now, as far as new features, we'll go over the physical changes and then the bug fixes after that. The first thing is if we go into settings and then we go down to Safari under Safari, if we scroll down and maybe we're clearing our history and website data, tap on this, tap on clear history and data, and it will now ask you if you want to keep or close any tabs that are open in Safari. This is a new feature that was added with 15.6. So it's something that you'll see with this new update you have seen in previous betas as well, but it's new to 15.6. Now, if we go out of that, we'll go back. And the first time you're setting up a new iPhone, it will give more information about communication safety for a child. You don't have to turn it on. You can enable it if you want to. And there's new buttons with additional information about how it works when you're setting it up. Also, if we go into screen time where we're looking for communication safety, if you select a child and go into screen time and then to communication safety, after you've selected a child, you can see now you have the option to view safety resources, of course, but then below that is a new option for improved communication safety. There's some new wording here explaining more, and then you can turn it on or not. So these are for analytics and improvements. It wasn't here before you can turn it on or you can just leave it off. Either way, it's up to you within the home app. If someone invites you to actually share a home with them and it's an unknown sender, you can actually report that as junk, ignore it or cancel it now. So that's something that's found in the code. And thanks again to Steve Mosher for helping me out with that. But that's something that's updated within 15.6 overall. And also if you receive an international call, it will designate it as international and show that there's handoff and give you options to report it as junk. So that's something that's a little bit new reporting that is junk. So those are physical changes you can see if you're receiving those calls. Now within the TV app, Apple has added a really nice feature for live sports. This is something that I think people have wanted for a while. And if you're watching a live sports game, it's already in progress. You'll have the ability to pause, rewind, or fast forward. That's something they've added for their sports games where it acts similar to what you would have with a DVR. You can pause it at any time and then fast forward or rewind. And hopefully we'll have more sports options in the future as well, whether that be soccer, NFL, or more. Now, Apple has resolved quite a few issues in this update, and one is pretty major for a lot of people, and that's storage. If we go into our settings, then general, then iPhone storage, iPhone storage has been updated where it will no longer show that the device storage is full, even when it's available. So quite a few people had issues where it would say the storage is full, even though they had a ton available. Also down at the bottom, I've talked quite a bit about system data and system data is more of a swap space. So this is going to go up and down regularly, it's sort of a cache where iOS can put things as needed. So I wouldn't worry too much about this quite a few of your storage issues should be resolved with this particular update.
Now they've fixed an issue with accessibility as well. So if you go to accessibility, then voiceover, and if you're someone that uses braille and you were having an issue when maybe you were using mail, navigating text within mail, they fixed an issue that could cause braille devices to slow down or stop responding when you're navigating. And so that should be fixed for anyone using braille. They've also fixed an issue in Safari. So if you're using Safari, and within Safari, you'll see it loaded the Apple homepage. Sometimes a tab could revert back to a previous page. So maybe you have a page over here and it reverts back. It should fix that issue in this update. So that's great to see as well. The other day I've mentioned an issue where Apple service centers had heard from Apple that there was actually a problem that they were looking into with the iPad mini where it wasn't recognizing a charger. iOS 15.6 resolves that. So if we plug in a USB-C charger to the sixth generation iPad mini, you'll see it starts charging. That should be resolved for anyone having that problem. And so it seems like it's working. I personally never had the issue, but if you did, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Now there's another issue that Apple resolved, but they haven't said that they've resolved it, at least in the notes. And that has to do with third-party music apps in the dock. Prior to iOS 15.6, if you maybe have Spotify in the dock or another third-party music app, and you've already deleted the Apple music app, and then you go to re-download it, in previous updates, it would actually replace it in the dock. Now, if we go and re-download Apple Music, we'll tap on download here, give it just a moment, it starts to download, and you'll see it's not replacing Spotify, but instead it's actually installed in the app library. So this is something they've resolved, why they haven't added it to the notes, I'm not sure, but it is fixed in 15.6. So as far as bugs, that's everything that Apple has said that they've fixed, plus a few extras. They've also mentioned a known issue that remains as well in their notes. Typically, you'll find it in the feedback app, but once you install the release candidate, typically it removes that. And so what they've said is based on the home app, maybe you're trying to add a device, it says the iOS device that initiates pairing needs to be logged into the same iCloud account as the home hub. Only the owner of a home, not an invited user, can pair Matter accessories. So it's specific to Matter accessories. That should be resolved 100% with iOS 16, as that's more focused on the newer architecture of Matter. And so that's every bug fix and known issue that remains. As far as the phone getting too hot or anything like that with iPhone overheating, this phone has been incredibly cool even after installing the update. Even though it has to process quite a bit in the background, it stays nice and cool the entire time. So I know some people are concerned with that as it's getting hotter outside for the summer. It seems to stay nice and cool. Now, if you have your phone in a case that completely seals it, you may want to consider removing that on a very hot day. As far as iOS 15.6 public release, well, based on what we've had with previous updates, I would expect it next Monday or Tuesday. This week, we've had a bunch of beta releases. Yesterday with iOS 16 beta 3 re-release, we had the public beta come out. Now we have 15.6 release candidate. It's possible they could put it out at the end of the week. Typically, it will be the following week. That gives them time to determine if they need another release candidate if there's additional issues. I think it's pretty stable, though, at this point. As far as iOS 16, well, like I said, we had the public beta yesterday. It's possible we could have beta 4, iOS 16 beta 4 next week or the following week. We're not really sure at this point since we just had a re-release. Typically with beta 3 or 4, we'll have a two-week gap and then every so often after that, we'll have a weekly release. So every week in August, typically we'll have a release with a final release sometime in September for iOS 16. I also would expect iOS 15.7 betas after the release candidate and then the final release. So that seems to make sense. Also, if you're on iOS 16 betas, you won't see this update as you're on a newer version. You would need to use a computer to go back to iOS 15. And I have a separate video on that. As far as security updates, this will have a bunch of security updates in it. And if we go to the Apple security website, you can see here, here's the security update site, but they don't update this until the final release is out. So once it's out, we'll see everything new. You can see the previous versions here and it will go through everything that's been updated as far as security. And so that leads me to, should you install iOS 15.6 RC? Well, if you've been wanting to try iOS 15.6, you're having issues with 15.5, definitely try out the public beta version as that's the final release. So is the developer version as well, but just make sure you have a backup in case you have any issues. But this tends to be a very solid, reliable version of iOS 15. Most people don't have any issues with it. So you could definitely try it out. Just be aware that it is still technically not 100% done, but a release can 
that unless they find any issues is the one that will release to the public. As far as battery life, it's been pretty good for most people. I actually had someone send in their battery life since they've been using it full time and I saved their screenshots and you can see this is from yesterday on a 13 Pro Max. Eight hours and 36 minutes of screen on time, six hours and 12 minutes of screen off time. You can see the day before, four hours and 17 minutes of screen on time, two hours and two minutes of screen off time, and they only used about 30% of their battery. They're easily getting about 12 hours of screen on time or more on their iPhone. So it seems to be a very solid update as far as that goes. When it comes to performance, it's been very smooth, whether you're on a phone with ProMotion or not, just going into different apps, different things loading, it's definitely the most reliable and stable version and fast version of iOS 15, it seems. So just going through different things, maybe loading Minecraft here. We'll give it just a moment to load. It takes a second. There we go. Resume and we're in. Now this is an iPhone 12, so it's pretty fast, but frame rates are nice and fast. Reloading apps are nice and fast. Just moving around. Everything seems to be super fluid and fast. If I could get out of this game, now we're out and it's nice and quick. Now I did run benchmarks with Geekbench 5 and you can see it scored 1,581 for single core, 3,913 for multi-core. This is well within the specs compared to the previous betas. As you can see here, it's within 10 to 20 and usually I say within 100 or so or 200 that's basically what you should get after a while. Now this was checked right after installing the update, so this is pretty impressive overall. I would expect typical performance from it, but this is not a 100% way to actually gauge the performance. Overall usage will show you that, but it seems to be nice and fluid and fast. And so that's everything with iOS 15.6 RC. Like I said, we can expect the final release within a week or so. And of course we'll have a follow-up on the weekend where we talk about how it's been after a few days, along with the public beta of iOS 16. If you've found anything more in this update, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.